<sighs> Morning. So, Buddy's already up. I saw him. I saw him barking the other day. He was chasing a squirrel. But as you guys can see, well, this field is the last field we have to plant. The home farm here is the last field we have to plant. I've gotten everything done, but you guys saw me do that one in another episode. Um, I finished fields. Uh, I named them 20 and 21. I finished uh, a day ago. So that's it. It's this field. And the planting is over. We can take a break. But we have something special in store for today. Buddy, come here. Guess what? <laughs> We're getting something green. So you guys heard it, you guys probably, well, first of all, you guys probably saw it in the thumbnail, but um, what Case did is they came out with a Steiger version, a Steiger that's, I don't know if this is true or not, and I should probably look this up, but let me know if this is true. Did Case buy Steiger or did Steiger go out of business or who bought Steiger? Like the actual Steiger brand, the green tractors. I would assume Case bought Steiger, but assumptions make a bad word out of you and me. So, we can't assume there. Um, I should probably look that up. Here, let me pull up my iPad. Did Case I H, did Case I H by Steiger? Question mark. Wikipedia. Now, people never say to trust Wikipedia, guys, but fast information is the best information. I'm, I'm joking about that, but seriously, in all seriousness, teachers hate Wikipedia. They want you to go to some credible source that's like an hour to find and literally could be written by somebody if you really want to pull a prank. But who's going to pull a prank and just make up this stuff on Wikipedia? So, um, obviously something like this, I would trust. Uh, International Harvester purchased Steiger in 1986. Okay, okay. So this is part of my demo program with Case IH. And what we're going to do is trade in this demo for another demo, the Steiger. The green stagger. So what I gotta do is fire this up. We're gonna drop the chain here and we're gonna actually hook this up to the ripper because I'm gonna put the green stagger on the ripper and they're gonna get that all calibrated for me and make sure everything's good before I before I actually start ripping with it. By the way, if you guys enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button. So if you guys remember last time, I put my ripper, I just always keep it back here. So we're gonna hook up to the John Deere ripper. There's actually, Ace actually has a, uh, a nine shank ripper and i'm surprised they don't give me that to demo but it is what it is okay so we're all hooked up let's go case and trade tractors now i have a couple plans for today that involves the planter first the main important goal well first the main important thing i need to do is the farmer the farmer that previously farmed this field knew it was going to be his last year and so i understand there's no incentive to plow it up to till it up in the fall if it's your last year i totally get it just screw the other farmer over. Not screw him over, but I understand. I understand. I would maybe consider doing the same thing, but it is what it is. Um, he didn't... There's a lot of compaction around the edges of the field. Specifically not here, because this wasn't here before. But along the far edges of the field, there's a lot of compaction, because they're taking semis, grain carts, in and out of there. So, what I'm going to do is hook up the new Steiger and start ripping that up, just the edges, so that we don't have yield problems on the edges there. Compact. And then, we'll go to plant it. Looks beautiful. Since I'm not farming a crazy amount of acres, I have time to do stuff like this. To, to try to get the best, obviously you should always try to get the best yield possible, but I have time to do the little things, to try and get the best yield po possible out of my last field here. Hazard's on and we are rolling. Now it's gonna be interesting, going back to tires. Cause the Steiger they gave me, uh, is gonna have st is gonna have tires. It'll be dual. It'll be narrow dual tires. Corn is uh, <laughs> corn is a growing there. That was the first field we planted right there. That corn corn's coming along good. Now I do own this ground right here, and this is grass. Or it, I could what I should have done is planted in, in as alfalfa. Here's also field. I think this is field 22 or 21, which we planted as corn. And then there's another field over here that I that we planned as beans, which is right behind the Case H dealership that we own. But everything's coming along good. I'm happy, I'm happy so far. I don't know whose farm that is. I still haven't met that dude, no idea. Yo, can you see it? Can you see the Steiger from here? Well, here we are. Make sure everything's good, pulling in there good. There's the Steiger, there she is. Okay, yeah, that'll be good, perfect. Okay, so the sh they told me to drop the, they told me to drop the ripper right here, so I'm gonna get it unhooked and then hook up the stagger to it, and then they'll get it all set up from there. They also want me to pull the quad track in here because it's got its, it has to do its first oil change since it's new. Just a couple service things before they put it on the lot. So, there we go. Goodbye quad track. It definitely helped my decision. I'm leaning more towards a quad track, but there's a lot of more stuff to try out before we really make a decision on a big tractor. And here she is. The green machine, Case IH Stagger. I feel like we just, 
If we have so much power, maybe what we need is more, uh, is more, more tires. I feel like there's some narrow. It it should be fine. We'll be we'll be fine with traction. But with a 620 horse tractor, I think the biggest issue we're gonna run into is just having tractor. I think we have the horse is having tires. I think we have the horsepower. I just don't know if we have if we have the traction for that horsepower. It's even got a green seat. <laughs> this is this is like a love or hate thing, man. Some of you guys, even though even you guys who may be case fans may hate this tractor. To me, it's cool. I don't know if I could run this on my farm fully though. This this neon green. But they never told me what it has. I didn't ask for a PTO, didn't ask for a three-point. So I wasn't expecting this. It's six hydraulics, of course, draw bar. I don't know, cat four, category four, three point. Probably cat five actually i guess got firestone duels on there i think these are the 480s yep 480 okay this is gonna be interesting it is i've, I've always been leaning more towards tracks but it'll be it'll be cool running an articulated high horsepower wheeled tractor okay we got her hooked up now the mechanic's gonna run through a couple things to make sure it's all set up and i won't have any issues once i get to the field with the ripper okay yeah thanks man she's all ready the staga is ready I honestly feel like this is overkill almost. This is crazy. The crop textures, they're so realistic. Maybe, because it's real life. But no, in all seriousness, on a side note, these crop textures are are, are really realistic. I, I honestly love this map. Now, a lot of people are concerned about my lack of cattle. So, coming up, it may be coming up in the in the future, there's a cattle auction, uh, a town away, and I was thinking about going to it. We'd obviously start small, but it'd be fun. It'd be fun starting to grow a cattle operation. Steiger, welcome home. This is Johnny the first, Johnny the second, and that's Buddy. He's happy to meet you. So what we got going on, specifically not here, but around the road and around that border, and then around to the other side, to the north part of the field, I have to, I'm gonna rip that up. I'm just gonna rip that up. That's where it seems like a lot of traction is, and then we're gonna get planting this field. I may have to swing through with the cultivator after I rip this up though. We got her unfolded. I'm gonna back up to the fence without taking out my white fence. Drop her down. We're off. We're ripping. Okay, everything seems smooth. The only thing is, man, my tires are turning black pretty quick here. I don't know if we adjusted that disc right, because if you guys can see that front right wheel there, it keeps spinning. It's not fully on the ground, which maybe either means we have too much back pressure back pressure to, towards the disc or the disc just isn't in the ground all the way that shouldn't be spinning like that it's working good right now now once we get to this corner i'm gonna have to lift it up and obviously back it in the corner and then go from there i should probably to be honest i mean really if you think about the compaction of the field assuming they formed it a normal the normal way most farmers would farm it, I should probably do two passes around this field. Especially by this roadside here. That's probably important. Because if you think about it, it, assuming they use the semi or gravity wagons, usually they'll pull in and then pull right alongside the road and the grain cart will run across the field and unload them. Now, since we are so behind with this field, what I'm going to put in is I'm going to put in beans in this field. Oh, also, oh shoot, I forgot to tell you guys. On one of the fields over there that I was talking about, we actually planted wheat in one of the fields. I got some wheat in, and I want to try it here in Nebraska before things got, I don't know, before things, before I started committing to certain crops. I really want to understand different crops and how they grow in Nebraska. So I was like, some guys grow wheat, it's a little more out west, not in the northeast corner, but I want to try wheat. Maybe if I would have planted it in the winter time, we could have got winter wheat in, harvested it, and then planted beans. I'd really like to try that sometime. Power is there on the Steiger. She's pulling her like there's nothing behind her. But the issue comes in hand if it gets muddy, 
traction is going to be our biggest issue. So we're ripping along the road again just because I assumed this is where a lot of the compaction is. You can kind of see it throughout the ground. Uh, so I really want to get this roadway done. And then what I'm going to do is maybe unhook this and hook it up to the Actually, the 8970 is hooked up to the cultivator. It, I hate unhooking and hooking up attachments even though I want to put some hours on the Steiger. We got we to gotta use 8970. There's no point in unhooking it and then hooking it up to the Steiger. This doesn't have to be perfect either because I would assume I may get this corner because trucks probably do pull in and out right along the field there. I'm going to just do one more pass here. Okay, I'd say we're good. So I'm going to fold up the disc, take it back, hook up to the 8970, and then cultivate this up. And the next is jump in the John Deere 8RT to start planting. Now also in farm sim, I know this isn't farm sim, so I don't know, what, I don't know why I'm even talking about farm sim, but in farm sim, uh, there's a new 8RT coming, a new generation 8RT. The 8RT that got announced by John Deere, I don't know, like a month back, and it's going to come to farm sim probably before the 8RT actually gets released to real farmers, or to, you know, in, in this world, in this real world here. <laughs> I'm just saying, farm sim 2021 better have an option where you can have your dog, your partner in crime, right along with you in the tractor. And he actually, he can come play, he or she can come places with you, they can go to the store with you, that'd be cool, that'd be really cool. That's something I really want to see, but obviously, it's, it's such a small feature. There's a lot more features that are more important that need to come to FS2021 than that. Steiger, she did good. I'm not sure what we're gonna use it for once summer comes. We have a couple more things that I wanna rip up. Maybe not the front yard, but there is some grass over here that I probably should have done in the fall or spring and plowed up so we could plant alfalfa that I may try to get in soon after we're done planting and try to get some alfalfa growing. 8970, you ready? So I'm gonna let the 8970 warmed up. Hasn't been started for a couple days. It's pretty warm outside, but let's let it warm up for a couple minutes. Okay, 8970's ready to roll. But hey, so we're gonna head out, get these edges cultivated, and then we should be good to go. I'm not gonna cultivate the whole field just because I'm putting, it wasn't corn last year, it was soybeans last year, and I don't, there's no need really. Drop the cultivator down and get rolling. And I think the 8970, we've been, we've been cultivating at like eight, nine mile an hour. There we go. We're good. Now guys, since, since this is strictly a farming video, most likely the audience I have watching this is a farming audience, like specifically that's really interested in farming. I say, I don't say this all the time. I try to say it, but I don't want to be just shove it down people's throats and say it too much. But man, real talk here. There is a, and I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious here. There is a, I even give speeches on this in class all the time to my ag, my ag classes and stuff in college. There's a, there is a crazy opportunity on YouTube for just agriculture in general. I guess social media in general. You see it right now. You see it, you see a lot of big farming YouTubers and stuff. But in the next five to ten years, man, it's just when I, when I think about it, it's, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. A lot of these big guys, you already see it with Welkers. They're gonna be they're gonna be sponsored by all sorts of brands, by John Deere, by Case IH. Everybody's gonna kind of have a partnership if you're if you're kind of one of the top people. And man, if you're if you're you know over 15, 16 years old and you live on a family farm and you think you're gonna farm for the rest of life, start a YouTube channel, man. The opportunity is crazy. I think I would almost trade my whole YouTube channel and any income that came from it to just grow up on a family farm and just start fresh right now knowing what I know that there is a crazy opportunity in the next five, 10 years of just having an ag YouTube channel. It's crazy. And I, I can't believe it took me this long to really see it. But I mean, some of you guys may be busy right now and, and, and I agree. And maybe there's an excuse of why you shouldn't start. But man, if you, if you do get into it, you just gotta Put your head down for a couple years and just work your butt off. Cool the Corn Star is a heck of an example. He's a, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to him a little bit and he is a, uh, he's a really hardworking kid and he's uh he's got it all lined for his future. For the next, when I think about his farm in the next 10 years, how much it's gonna grow just because of his YouTube channel, whew, it's gonna be crazy. 
Okay, I think we're good. Time to get planting. We're gonna back the cultivator in. And actually, I mean, we're pretty much done with the cultivator. I should probably just keep it outside. We got room in here, so we'll keep it in here. But man, I should probably just wash it off and keep it outside. There we go. 8970 is done for the sprint. So I've got the 8RT fired up. I'm gonna let her warm up. And then we do have to throw out. We, ah, shoot. We have to toss in some seed yet. I'm gonna get some seed in there. And then we're gonna get rolling. I got the F450 hooked up. We're gonna back that planter and 8RT up to the seed tender and load her up. And I think we'll be golden. Let's see, do we need fuel? Ah, uh, we should be good on fuel. She's a filling. I did kind of miss some, but I think we should be good. So some of you guys may be like, dude, squad, your grass is getting way too tall, dude. Got her. I think what I'm going to do is bail this up. There's just so much grass here, I might as well just bail it up. Especially if we have cattle. So, we're going to take the crazy long trip over to the last field that I have to plant. And we're here. So I think what I'm going to do is go through and plant the headlands last. Especially with these tracks, I've noticed they really, they really tear up the ends. I want to get the headlands in last for sure. Um, if I was running tires, I, I still probably would want to do the headlands last. We're a planting. Everything seems to be good. Now I've messed with the setting since we've, we've been planting corn, we've been planting soybeans, and we've been planting wheat. The wheat was with the drill, but the soybeans and the corn I've switched off. The last field we planted soybeans in, everything worked well. And you guys talk about the drill, I did have to borrow it. I'm sorry I didn't get any footage. We were out there, it was just go, 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 go. Uh, so I didn't have any footage on it. Looks like a bearing went out on my right tire there my my left tire on the right side there my gosh dude <sighs> let's check her out there we go we got her fixed it wasn't a bearing mud was just locked in there just old mud and it was just jam-packed in there that thing went spin there wasn't enough down pressure even it was like somebody welded the tire everything's going good here no worries nothing bluebird today She's beautiful. Well, we're getting there. We're slowly getting there. It's about noon, so what I'm gonna do is I, I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull the planter right up here and then run into the house and grab some lunch quick. Maybe slip like a little 10 minute nap. Who knows? Maybe Buddy wants a nap. We gotta keep going though. But guys, this is gonna be the end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I have to finish this field yet and then we'll be completely done with planting. If you enjoyed the video, Smash that like button, and hey, I'll see you later, guys. Thanks for watching.